Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am here today moving my whole setup outside to set up my first ever indigo vat. Stony Creek Colors has generously sent me a, a kit that they assembled for me with some American grown plant derived indigo. And I have all the ingredients here needed to set up a basic iron vat which is the kind of indigo vat that works best for cotton fibers. Because if you were to add wool or something to the vat, it might absorb some of the iron in there and it would mess with the chemistry. So let's get started. In addition to your supplies, you also need to have a handy set of instructions. And I'm looking at the instructions from Grand Keegan. I'll put a link in the video description. But Graham also sells a kit using Stony Creek Colors Indigo. So if you want some of the materials and everything that I'm setting up today, check out his website to ha find this complete kit containing American-grown plant-derived indigo. The kit that Stony Creek Colors sent me contains the plant-derived indigo dye powder, which is this really, really deep chalky powder back there. Um, ferrous sulfate heptahydrate, which is the iron that we will be using in here. Um, hydrated lime, which is calcium hydroxide. And yeah, those are the basic chemicals that we will be needing. At the end, you might want to neutralize your, um, neutralize your fiber, and so you can use some citric acid for that. As for supplies, I have my instructions handy, which I printed out. Um, and the other things that you'll need will be an accurate kitchen scale. This is the one that I've been using as a die scale for a long time. And I decided to grab some of these um, plastic containers to use as weighing boats when I'm measuring out the powder. You will want a five gallon bucket with a lid. And I actually grabbed two, so that way I could have one for the indigo vat itself and then the second one for the rinse vat because you'll want to, um, you're going, there's a lot of sediment, I guess, in this type of vat, so there's going to be a lot of rinsing. You're going to need some kind of stirring stick. So I have this paint stir. Um, and you need rubber gloves, and so I have these, these kitchen rubber gloves that go up higher to my elbow. Now I have my, over, over here I've got my nitrile gloves that I use a lot and I'll probably use those when I'm measuring things out because I find it a lot more tactile, but um, the bigger gloves will be for when I need to reach into the vat. You'll need a water bottle with either some stones or marbles. Um, this will be to make a paste out of the indigo. And then you'll want some safety equipment. When I'm measuring with putters, I always like to make sure I'm wearing a dust mask and some goggles just to protect myself. Now, the cool thing about an iron vat is that it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't really need to be hot and it can last for a really long time. So this is one of the reasons why you want the tight sealing lid. It's because if you don't have to exhaust the whole vat, you can seal it up and save it for another day. The final thing that I have out here is I have my electric hot plate and a pot of warm water. You need to start with some boiling water to get things going, but you don't necessarily need to have this pot outside. You could boil your water inside, transfer it to the bucket, and bring it outside to get started. I was getting all prepared to go weigh everything when I opened up my plastic baggie and found that the lovely, lovely people at Stony Creek Colors pre-measured the ingredients for me. Um, but they also gave me some extra of the lime and the ferrous sulfate in case I need to rebalance my vat. But this means that I don't need to weigh them out and I can focus now on transferring this indigo powder into my plastic bottle. I am a little unsure on the best way to get the indigo into the bottle, but I do have this funnel and so I'm going to use that to help me out. Okay, adding 
all of the powder to the funnel. It helps that the funnel is dry. Okay, so now what we are doing with this bottle, and I took the marbles out um, to add the powder, but we are gonna be creating a paste out of the indigo and some water. Um, this way it won't completely be clumped when we have it in our vat. Indigo in this form, in its blue form, is not soluble in water. So we're gonna need to reduce it um, and that's what some of these compounds will help us do. Okay, so I've got my 50 grams of natural indigo powder here in this plastic bottle. And now I am going to add back, I guess they, the instructions said to do 20 or so marbles. These are actually some uh, marbles from uh, who's the what's it? Uh, these these are used for flower arrangements and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all the marbles back into my bottle. So now my marbles and the indigo are all in the bottle. So I, I've read briefly that one measure of indigo um, that people will there'll be a number associated with its purity. Um, I'm just rinsing off some of the powder from my funnel that maybe I added. I don't know, a little too much? We'll see. Um, but it says, that there's a note on here, this is about 35%. Um, and now we get to start shaking because we want, we don't want that powder to just stay a powder. We want it to get like a really nice suspension. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake this for about two minutes to try to get this into a nice slurry paste of our indigo. I also wanna add that all of the equipment that I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment. Nothing that you see here is anything that I use for any kind of food preparation. Okay, I'm gonna take my hot water and pour it into my five gallon bucket. And I'm actually gonna add a little more water to my pot. It's a really hot day, so the water's gonna stay warm, but. All right, now I'm gonna add the ferrous sulfate to my vat. And stir it up. Well, that looks rusty, doesn't it? A lot of steam coming up. Um, stir until fully dissolved. I guess I don't really have a description of how this is supposed to look. How do I know? Okay, I guess I'm doing a few things bad. I'm splashing. We're not gonna wanna do splashing. You don't really want air in here. But, I mean, I've definitely got a suspension. I just don't know if it's dissolved. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, that is not dissolved at all. Um, if I stop stirring, I can see that it is a powder. Huh.
Is it possible I don't have enough water? I'm heating up some more. Can you see the like particulates that I see? So the reason why I know it's not dissolved is what I see is a, um, it's opaque. It's not transparent and when things dissolve, it should look, could be colored, but it should look clear. So I'm gonna stir another two minutes, maybe, and I'm gonna go troubleshoot. <laughs> So there's definitely something that is insoluble in here. And maybe this is part of what the sludge would be and there would be some, there's talk about how you could get some stain on the bottom. So I'm not sure how normal this is. <laughs> this is my first vat, but we're gonna proceed and see what happens. The instructions didn't really say anything about troubleshooting this, so I want to proceed and add the hydrated lime. Um, okay, and then the color, it didn't say anything about the color after adding the ferrous sulfate, but let's try adding this. Let's add, this is 150 grams of the hydrated lime. Put that aside. And this time, you can hear that there's still, because it was sort of a clumpy white powder. Yeah, something is not right here. It said that it should change to a chalky green, but I'm just seeing a lot of iron. And I feel I can feel the, and you can still see, there's the chalky sediment on the base. So this time I know I'm gonna need to stir for a while. Um, so I'm gonna keep stirring and then I will come back. So the good news is that this is look actually looking like a chalky green to me. And that's what it said it should look like. The bad news is that I think that all that iron was supposed to dissolve. So the, the lime, you can hear some of the the larger particles along the bottom. I did add a tiny bit more of water that I had been heating to this. Um, I want to try to not introduce air into it. But I'm feeling, to be honest, a little nervous. Like I'm expecting that this iron will likely stain the yarn but I have heard that it should dissolve some more in citric acid so um, but there's no question that this is starting to look like a chalky green to me it's just that that very rust iron stain is concerning but anyway I keep stirring until all that lime is dissolved I'm not sure how much you guys can tell but if I stop stirring, it does, yeah, there's a lot of sediment in here. So, I mean, this, this type of vat is supposed to have a lot of sediment. So maybe this is part of what it is talking about. But I thought that part of the sediment came from the reaction with the indigo. So I am slightly concerned, but it's not like I guess I added anything I wasn't Supposed to, so I think I'm gonna try proceeding and cross my fingers. <laughs> Hopefully, this won't become a indigo vat fail. I am shaking up my indigo bottle again got the marbles in it and it's a dark 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 blue and I'm gonna carefully pour into the vat attempting to not pour in any of the marbles and I've got my cover handy because I'm gonna cover the vat when we're not actively stirring 
I've taken off the lid and whoa, there's a lot of powder up by the lid. Oh dear. Maybe I should have used a bottle with some thicker sides. Okay. Oh dear. Anyway, let's try to... Let me, maybe I need to add more water into this now. Maybe I didn't quite have enough powder or water in here. It's too pasted. Whoops. It's hard to tell. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Trying not to pour in my marbles. And I'm going to add more water to the bottle. This time I added a lot of water to the bottle. Now when I shake it, you can see it be a little clear. So maybe I didn't add enough before. Oh, lost the marble. Ha. But the good news is at least I'm feeling like I'm getting all this indigo out of my bottle. Oops, don't want splashing, don't want splashing, don't want splashing. Okay, I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna carefully stir. Probably should have started this before. Carefully stir without splashing. So as the directions say, we've got a nice, deep, deep chalky blue color. So now what should happen, and hopefully I wasn't blocking the camera, is that we should see, I'm going to stir a little bit more and then stop and cover it for a bit. But I guess I'm supposed to ch check on it over the course of, the, of an hour, but we should start to see it turning more green um, and less blue. Okay, this is only maybe been a minute since I first started, but I'm supposed to now revisit this multiple times over the next hour and hopefully we'll see it start to turn more and more green. So I'm trying hard not to splash, but I am using my stick to make sure I stir up the sediment that is on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to cover this. And I think I will set a timer for 10 minutes to then come back and check on our vat and see how everything is doing. I had only let about five minutes pass before I came back. But, hey, is that like a color? Is that greenish? I don't know. I think we're beginning to see something that looks like the flower. Oh, it's still very, very dark. And blue. You can hear my one marble down there. But I realized that we don't want the indigo to not be in suspension because if the indigo settles to the bottom then it can't react. But I hope there's some of that iron in solution trying to be optimistic. I have no idea how much I'm supposed to actively stir versus just sort of like make a little vortex and let it be, you know, if it's like an every five minute thing or what.
So recommend stirring around in one direction, creating a vortex to blend all ingredients, cover the vat when you're not actively stirring. So let's revisit your vat a few more times over the next hour and stir each time. Okay, a few more times over the next hour. Therefore, it had been about five minutes. This time I'm actually gonna set a timer for 10 minutes, wait, come back, and then we will stir and see where we are. It has now been about 15 minutes. And I will say that I enjoyed the time inside. This is still looking really blue to me. Like there's sediment that was there before. I'm nervous, you guys. I'm really nervous. Don't want to waste this amazing. <laughs> this is still looking very, very blue. Ooh. The nice thing is that it'll definitely stay warm. It is blistering out here. All right, I am going to cover this up. Come back in another ten minutes, but I'm a little nervous. I believe this is at approximately 25. I don't know, guys. Still looks really blue to me. This is still looking very, very blue. I took a peek at, I have a book that I like, The Art and Craft of Natural Dyeing. And they have a slightly different protocol they use for this iron vat. But... I don't know. So there's like a good film on it, but I don't think that our indigo is reducing. All of you experienced indigo vat makers are gonna be watching, if you're watching this, you're gonna be smacking my, your heads for me. All right. Ah, I'm gonna stir this some more. Maybe I'll need to go back and check the footage and see if, um, you know, maybe I'm not stirring long enough. So yeah, this time I'm gonna hang out and stir for a while. Maybe that was my problem. Or whatever I did to mess up the iron. So, I've read that the, the more pure the water, the better. I've been using, I'm using tap water. Please, vet, please. Okay. I mean, maybe I just have not been stirring enough at any stage. I sort of wish I had a stir bar or something. But, oh, I'm looking forward to all the comments of this is what you did wrong, Rebecca. Okay, fingers crossed. Come back in another 10 minutes. I have reached out to Stony Creek. Apparently, they they said that the adding the ferrous sulfate to boiling water can kill it instantly, which was why I got the rest cloud. But the protocol they had directed me to said to add it to the boiling water. So maybe I was supposed to add it to cold boiling water? I don't know, but the good news so when I remove the lid, can you see that this almost looks a little purplish around the edges? Because that's one thing that they said, of course if I stir it, we're still looking pretty blue. For a second, I got kind of excited with that iridescent -y. But nevertheless, I think that, how hot is this? Maybe it's not that hot anymore, although it's hot outside. I might have to try to go about 
attempting to rejuvenate this. So I'm gonna see what the company has to say to help me. <laughs> um, but at the very least, I have a what not to do. And given that I wasn't entirely sure what it was supposed to look like, I had decided to just go for it. So. This is not the Mountain Dew lime green color that we want to see. So I'm now going to just close this, even though I think everything is completely oxidized anyway. And let's, let's see what they have to say about how I could go about fixing this. Oh, it's a hot day. All right, let's see if we can resurrect this a bit. Um, I want to take a peek at the color of our liquid and it's looking kind of brown um, so I don't know if that means if any reduction is taking place or not I guess it's not super blue but I can look at it when I mix it so the recommendation for trying to fix this is to try to use a bit more iron um, and so what I'm going to do is a teaspoon at a time, I'm going to dissolve it in some warm tap water. And this water that has just been sitting outside is tap water that is warm. So thankfully, even though everything is pre-measured, they gave me some extra for troubleshooting. So I can get a teaspoon, okay, I'm going to have to pour. teaspoon in warm water. And this looks a lot different to me. It's still somewhat rust colored, but it was not that bloom of rust that we saw last time. And sealing up the powder. And the other thing to note is that I'm not seeing the particles. Um, so now I'm gonna carefully pour this into the vat. Now we're gonna stir it up. Um, and then we'll wait 15 minutes and try adding another teaspoon. So I think that this is a situation where the instructions that I were given weren't wrong. It's just some people haven't been able to have as good of a success with them as others. Okay, so I don't have a glass pipette. But yeah, that's looking quite blue still. Alright, I'm going to stir it a tiny bit more, and then we're going to give it 15 minutes and hope that that helps. Alright, now I think that the color I'm looking for is a yellowish brown versus a green because of the iron vat. And let's see, hey, that's looking brownish. Um, so far I'm looking brownish, but I'm not sure, there's probably too much air. It's more of like a red brown. Hmm. I don't know you guys. That was definitely a brown. And now that it's all stirred up, if I look at the color, what does it look like? So it looks blue if I stir it up, because that's the, the indigo in there. But maybe, I don't know. Okay, I think I might just email. I know that my contact is in a meeting. I think I might cover this um, check in another little while 
and see because yeah I'm not sure hmm <laughs> not entirely sure <laughs> this second teaspoon of iron I don't think I have too much more than that sorry for my shadows <laughs> This is a second teaspoon of the iron. Stirring it up. It still has a rustish look, but yeah, it looks like it's in solution to me. Versus a suspension. All right, now I'm gonna add this. To the vat and let's stir it up. Really hard to say for me what is happening. I guess now I'm not going since it's stirred up I'm not going to be able to tell too much because the the sediment the indigo sediment is all raised up, but hopefully we've got some soluble iron now so we can start to see. Probably shouldn't do that. Probably should just stir in one direction. I'm going to cover this up because I am not actively stirring. And I'm going to go ahead and give this another 15 minutes. Um, and then we will... We'll see if that color is looking more yellow or if it's still looking quite brown. Ah, uh, the sounds of summer. Okay. Well, this is looking less blue, maybe? We're still at this, like, rust red color. So I am going to start up, mess with my contact, and then see what she thinks because that looks I guess I didn't show the camera very much but that was definitely sort of like a muddy reddish brown color versus a yellow but maybe that is the color and maybe it's yellow but reddish because of that iron in there so I will message her and see. I suppose I could always test with some yarn um, in a little while and see if that actually does anything. But, alright, I it's been about a half hour since I've been adding more iron. So I am going to let this sit. We're going to wait and we're going to see what we can learn. If it was going to reduce, it should have reduced by now. Um, it's been hours and, oh, that is definitely looking quite brown. Let's see. Yeah, the color is still very much a reddish brown. Not sure. Anyway, I'm not removing that, that bit of a flower, if that's what it is. I have a mini skein here of just bleach cotton that I pre-soaked and I'm going to stick it in the vat and just see what happens um, yeah because it's so it's taking on like this brownish color um, you know I, I've been given a recommendation to try setting up a new vat um, using some more of the lime and soda ash no sorry the lime and um, fair sulfate, but I, well, this is still pretty warm. I mean, it's really hot outside. So it's taking on, I mean, it's looking, looking blue in here. I could have added some more water. I just wanted to know if anything is happening. And 
think the protocol said you could do a dip from 30 seconds to a minute, so that's what I'm trying to do and just sort of see what, if anything, is happening. But the fact that it is looking bluish is not encouraging because it should not be looking bluish <laughs> at this stage. Um, it should only start looking bluish when it comes into contact with the air. Um, so anyway, let's pull it out and immediately go into our rinse water. You can see all that sediment coming off. I mean, that water looks yellow. I mean, it looks... But I don't know, it started looking blue in the water. So, I mean, that looks blue here, doesn't it? <laughs> A pale blue. Um, is it developing and getting bluer? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let's try. Let's try again. But I mean, it could just be taking up some stain if it's not reduced. Oh dear. I mean, it should not have been looking blue in the pot. It should have been looking yellowish, but you could see how dirty that water is with the reddish brown color. like holding it in my hand and into the Gee, wow that's taking a lot of stuff so I don't know if this is looking any different it's certainly blue um, like a blue gray this is getting any darker okay let's let's try again um, <laughs> you know going going for broke here I mean I should have added more volume or or something but it out and immediately into the rinse. I should put a cover on here, even though I don't think that we are in reduction at all. Okay, so it is looking a little greenish to me right now. Huh, I wonder if we'll see it like needs contact with air to turn blue. Interesting. I don't know if it is getting less yellow <laughs> or what. Oh, maybe. Okay, maybe it's done something. Maybe it's not done nothing. Hmm. No. It's still looking a little more green to me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious to see if that will wash out or what, but interesting. Okay, let me go inside and think a bit. Look at how dirty that wash water got just from the dips of a tiny amount of yarn. So, after a day playing with this, I don't have reduced indigo, and I did add some color to yarn, but this isn't really supposed how it's supposed to work or what it's supposed to look like. 
So I think I'm going to call this an end of part one of my indigo dyeing adventure. I have some tips on how to try to resurrect this indigo vat. Um, and I'll open this up again so we can look at our non-reduced sludgy sludge. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there, there are some things that could be done. Um, I have some suggestions that involve either uh, setting up um, a new water bath using a slightly different recipe with the lime and the ferrous sulfate. Um, and then adding this indigo mixture into that and so maybe that will kickstart the reduction. Um, after that, um, there's also a suggestion that is transferring the type of vat it is by adding some RIT color remover. Um, and so I, I don't know much about that type of vat and so I might need to read into that more. Either way, when we do dyeing projects, sometimes things work great and sometimes things work a little less than great. But I'm still gonna be planning on editing this video and sharing this uh, so that way you guys could see what did not work for me. So I think that the main takeaway is don't bother using boiling water. Use warm water for mixing up your iron and if you see something like you saw in this video where you got these beautiful blooms of insoluble iron, don't go ahead and add your indigo. <laughs> That's the big takeaway. That's the biggest mistake that I made was adding the, vindigo, the indigo to that vat. Um, so yeah, I, I'm saving this. I'm not tossing it. So we'll, we'll see uh, when I can do part two but this is a work in progress. Anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you appreciate my willingness to try new things and share them with you even when they fail, make sure that you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Uh, I release multiple new videos every week. I love trying new things, and I'm not gonna let a fail let me give up completely, so. I plan to give this another shot sometime soon. Thank you guys for watch so much for watching.